Not sure if any of you know, but I am quite a big fan of Coraline. I mean, the tattoo speaks for itself. I grew up with the movie in a sense. It came out when I was 10, and I've loved to be creeped out by it ever since. I never got around to reading the graphic novel until sometime a couple years ago. I'm not sure if I ever finished it, but I just read it in its entirety today, the day I'm writing the script, and I have some thoughts. Not gonna lie, this video is inspired by a video on the Princess and the Shriveners channel titled Why Were You and Coraline? This video has some opinions stated that are much different from my own, as well as a lot of interesting points I've never thought about. Side note, I just stumbled upon their channel within the past week, and let me just say, they have a lot of really interesting content. You should definitely check them out. The video influenced me to reread the book, and now we're here. So with this overly long introduction out of the way, let's get started. The book and movie have quite a few differences. The general story is the same, but plot events are switched around, elongated, or just dropped in the movie. For instance, Coraline only visits the other world twice in the book, but four times in the film. This spreading of events within the movie fulfills an important task. It normalizes the other world. Coraline's visits become frequent, and she gets to a point where she's only biding her time in the real world so she can visit the other world at night. It ultimately makes the question of whether or not Coraline should get buttons sewn into her eyes a little more difficult to answer for the viewer, seeing how much Coraline looks forward to her time spent in a different dimension. We as an audience also get excited to see what the other world has in store over the course of these visits. The characters in the film come off much more harsh than they are in the book. Coraline's mom in the movie only treats Coraline as if she's a pest. While some of that can be seen in the book, Coraline's mom doesn't always just brush her off. In the movie, she only unlocks the door to the other world on the condition that Coraline doesn't ask anything else of her. In the book, she not only unlocks the door, but takes the time to explain why the door is bricked up and what's on the other side. The book version of Coraline's mother is more dismissive than just plain rude. Compared to Coraline's mom, the book and movie versions of Coraline's dad are overall more similar. However, we do get to see more of a relationship between Coraline and her dad in the book. Right before Coraline is about to enter the other world to save her parents, she shares an anecdote with the cat about how her dad once saved her from a wasp's nest. From that experience, he teaches her that being brave is doing something even when you're afraid of it. There's another instance in the midst of her search for the souls of the lost children where Coraline encounters her other dad, deformed and nearly unrecognizable. She extends her sympathy for him when he expresses that the other mother put him in the cellar to waste away. Then we have Coraline herself. While the book and movie characters share some of the same qualities like courage, intelligence, and wit, book Coraline is more rational and self-sufficient. When the other mother takes her parents, Coraline isn't deeply worried by their absence at first and takes care of herself for three days with little to no struggle. She eventually realizes what's happened to them and takes to calling the police first before entering the other world to battle the other mother. Coraline is grounded in the real world throughout the entirety of the book. Going off of that, Coraline's first visit to the other world is much different in the book than in the movie. In the novel, Coraline is immediately skeptical of the other world and withdrawn when speaking to her other parents. While she finds the other world more interesting and bountiful than the real world, she keeps it at an arm's length, unlike the awestruck and Coraline in the film. Her other parents are also much creepier initially. When Coraline goes to explore the other world, her other parents stand like statues near the front door, stating that they'll just wait for her to come back. Unlike the other parents in the film, they are less tactful and don't try to ease Coraline into the concept of the other world. Although her other parents are of no assistance in regards to understanding the other world in the book, Coraline has no trouble deciphering it for herself. She figures out that the other mother only embellishes what she thinks will interest Coraline, and with that, deduces upon walking up to her bedroom that it will remain an empty room until the exact moment she opens the door. Coraline also discovers that her parents are trapped in a snow globe by reasoning that the illusions made by her other mother could only twist and distort things that already existed, not create new things. Since in the book there was no snow globe on the mantle of her house in the real world, Coraline figures that the other mother put it there for a reason. These deductions show just how clever and attentive of a girl Coraline is. Just as the humans are less dramatic in the graphic novel, the cat is too. He's still wickedly smart and cunning, but he has a moment of vulnerability when the other mother begins flattening the other world during her battle with Coraline, and he realizes that there's no way out for him. He goes stiff and begins to tremble, and Coraline must pick him up and carry him with her. This moment of Coraline having to care for the cat, a character that, up until that point, possessed an all-knowing quality, makes the relationship more dynamic and shows that even the most intelligent of characters have their flaws as well. There are other small changes with minor characters between the book and movie, like Miss Spink and Miss Forcible not being as competitive or Mr. Bobo not being quite as eccentric. These differences can ultimately be chalked up to dramatization for film purposes. What I'm really here to talk about is an addition of two characters in the movie, YB and his grandmother. The Shriverner had some thought-provoking stuff to say in regards to this topic, and why were you and Coraline? What matters is that YB does not serve any purpose in this story. If he was interesting, I'd probably cut him some slack. But he's just not. And 
while I do agree with a great deal of it, I don't think Waibu was a completely useless character. He most certainly wasn't necessary, as we can see by evidence of the book, but he offered representation to multiple minority groups and added moments of comic relief to this incredibly dark children's film. That being said, he did change the form of the narrative quite a bit. It's him who gives Coraline the replica doll of herself, him who pulls her out of the mirror when the other mother throws her into it with the other ghost children, him who saves Coraline from the other mother's hand at the end of the film. Really, it's the last one that gets me the most. In the novel, Coraline spends weeks devising a clever plan to trick the hand into falling into the well, and her success with the plan is well earned. The YBX Machina aspect of the film is non-essential to the plot and ultimately dumps down Coraline's character. Also, we need to talk about the addition of the voodoo doll and the backstory of YB's grandmother owning the Pink Palace, both of which I am a fan of. These plot points made the storyline of the film a bit more complex and dimensional, and like the Shrivener said, I wish they would have spent more time on it. It being how the grandmother came to own the Pink Palace, how and when her sister got taken, and how her reunion with the sister went after Coraline found her lost soul. I don't understand why the filmmakers would go to the trouble of creating these interesting additions if they didn't plan to expand on them further. But although I miffed that they were glazed over, I'm still grateful that these plot points were added in the first place. Something I appreciate about the book is the attention to detail. Not to say that the movie isn't detailed, but it's evident that the book is more intent on throwing in little instances to build the characters in the story world. For example, when Coraline goes to see Miss Bink and Forcible's never-ending show in the other world, one of the two hands her a small box of chocolates. A dog in the audience starts sniffing her chocolates and Coraline is compelled to offer one to him. She states that she thought chocolates weren't good for dogs, and he says that here, in the other world, that's all dogs eat. There's another scenario in the book that jumped out at me. Coraline is in the midst of making the deal with the other mother, and she asks the other mother if she'll keep her word. The other mother swears it on her mother's grave, Coraline asks if her mother has a grave, and the other mother says that she put it there herself, and that, when she found her trying to crawl out, she put her back. This indicates that the other mother's history is nuanced, and that her methods may surpass children. Then there's the emphasis on names. Obviously, the movie deals with this in its own respect, with the whole It's Coraline! Caroline what? Coraline! Coraline Jones. Bit, but the book is even more adamant with this notion. An aspect of the conversation between Coraline and the cat is how the cat has no name. This bothers Coraline. She wants to be able to call upon him when he's needed. The cat states that cats don't need names because they know who they are, whereas humans need names because they don't. The subject of names also comes up again near the end of the book, where Coraline finds out that the crazy old man upstairs' name is Mr. Bobo. She says that it never occurred to her that he would have an actual name. Maybe this is because Mr. Bobo didn't really need a name, because he already seemed to have a good grasp on his identity. Much like a cat. Overall, these two versions of Coraline evidently have more differences than similarities, and I would strongly urge you Coraline fans who may not have read the book to do so. The graphic novel offers up an interesting origin story and details that didn't make it into the final product of the film. But, because of the downbeat style and clever additions to the plot, the film remains my preference.